We start with the coronavirus situation here in South Korea. It's the first Monday of 2022, and we are seeing a continuous downtrend in the number of new infections. However, officials say it's still too early to let our guard down. Now, that's because the spread of the Delta and the highly transmissible variant Omicron still pose a serious threat. For more on this and other updates, our reporter Shin Yeun is here in the studio with us. Good morning, Yeun. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you both. Happy New Year. So, Yeun, let's start with the local tally for today. Right, so Mugyeon, we're expecting the daily tally to surpass 3,000 up until 9 p.m. Sunday. We recorded 2,977 infections. Now, this was down by 604 from what had been reported the same time the day before, and also down by over 1,900 from a week ago. But as you mentioned, the Omicron variant continues to be a concern. Yesterday, we saw 93 fresh Omicron cases, bringing the total tally above 1,200. In just a month, South Korea's total Omicron tally has surpassed past 1,000, a transmission rate 2.5 times faster than Delta. Now, yeah, and, um, South Korean authorities have uh, tightened up their antivirus regulations. They kick in today. Give us the details on that. Right, so these new measures are like a new policy on vaccine passes, which will take effect to encourage more people to get their booster shots. An expiration date will be implemented, which means vaccine passes will only be valid for six months for those who've completed a one or two dose vaccine regimen. In other words, after six months have passed since a person received their final jab, they would now need to get a booster shot in order to enter most public places. Now, this includes those who are fully vaccinated before July. A one week grace period will be imposed though to avoid any confusion but once that grace period is over those who violate this policy will be fined and like always people can certify their vaccination status when visiting different public facilities like restaurants and cafes using the Coov app. The app will show whether one has been fully vaccinated for more than 14 days or whether it has been over 180 days since they've received their last jabs and devices reading vaccination statuses will make a ding dong sound if a person is not fully vaccinated or when their vaccination certificate has expired. To avoid any complications, authorities have asked everyone to update their COV app to the latest version in advance. Also, authorities have decided to extend vaccine passes for department stores and big supermarkets from January 10th and extend them to 12 to 18 year olds from March 1st. So, Yen, alongside the vaccine passes, authorities have also um, extended the current social distancing measures that were supposed to be lifted on January 2nd. Tell us more on that. Right. The extended measures include limiting social gatherings to four people and restricting business operations to 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., uh, 9 p.m. for restaurants, cafes, indoor sports facilities, and 10 p.m. for academies, PC rooms, or party rooms. Now, there has been a change in the operation hour for movie theaters and performance halls, though. Previously, these venues were required to close at 10 p.m., but now they can allow customers to enter up to 9 p.m. as long as performances and movies end before midnight. All these restrictions have been extended for another two weeks, meaning they'll last until January 16th. Now, we're into year three of this pandemic now, and it's a question on many people's lips. When do we expect this pandemic to finally come to an end? Right, definitely. It's a question that many is asking, but unfortunately, many local experts said it will be difficult to see a complete end of COVID-19 anytime soon, especially since we continue to see new mutations of the virus. But some good news is that we've passed major milestones in the development of COVID-19 treatments. Experts have said the more effective the vaccines or treatments are, the more likely we'll be able to return to life without as many social distancing restrictions. Now, many said COVID-19 should be treated like like a common flu, which means that we should no longer separate those infected with COVID-19 and treat them at hospitals. Instead, COVID-19 patients should be treated at home with medications to stop them from developing critically ill symptoms. South Korea has already secured more than 360,000 courses of antiviral pills from Pfizer and around 240,000 from Merck. They'll secure an extra 400,000 at the beginning of this month. And Prime Minister Kim Bu-gyum said these oral treatments will be available for use as early as mid-January or the end of this month. Well, that's some good news. Well, yeah, and anyway, thank you for your report. We'll hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much.